Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great hump day because it is the middle of the week, and tomorrow, my goodness, tomorrow is already the beginning of the season. I can't wait to see the Rams versus the Buffalo Bills, um, and then, of course, Sunday we will have... Uh, all of the teams in action. Um, what I'm really looking forward to is tonight, shout out to my man, Rio Robinson, who is putting together another NFC East roundtable, who will be here in the Man Cave live. And we are going to be doing the roundtable to end all roundtables. We will have my son, Philly 500, who's never signed a player that he didn't think was going to be a Hall of Famer, as well as um, Cop Pizzle, who is been beaten down the last few years to the point where he's going to be leaving YouTube to to or he's going to be involving in YouTube so we will definitely be here having a ball at eight o'clock tonight um, I do have to give a shout out to Renee Ramirez got a package here I have the best fans in the world um, I've been blessed by getting so many different pieces and things like that um, that have come into the man cave here Oh my goodness, wait, wait, hold it. Hold the phone here. Oh my god, no. No. If I could, I tell you what, Renee, he, you made sure that this box was not going to get open. Hold up. Hold up. Oh. Bourbon? These are Joe Boo size. These are Joe Boo size right here. Oh my God, bourbon? Oh, okay, they're all bourbon. They're all bourbon jerseys. Well, he's a rum drinker. I, 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 I may, may try and, I, I might tape it over and put rum on it or, or, or make a new patch to go, oh wow. Where the hell did you find these, Renee? These are bad as can be. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to have to put one of those on Joe Boo. Shout out to Renee Ramirez. We've got plenty of the cowboy helmets. Oh, and we, we look, we, we've got both jerseys. Shout out to Renee. Renee, you are the one. Let, let me read this here. This is Renee Ramirez from Dallas, Texas. I sent you some small jerseys and helmets for your liquor bottles. Oh, no, th this is actually going to go on Joe Boo. For the extra ones for your family and friends, uh, keep the good work going, and let's go, Cowboys. This is, I, I've never seen anything that's been like that. Oh, my God. I'd love to know who actually makes these because I would get them to make Joe Boo ones. These are freaking insane. Thank you, Renee Ramirez. I have the best fans out there. I mean, seriously, this is the perfect size for Joe Boo. Although, he's been wearing his... Uh, Dak Prescott one. The first time he met Dak Prescott, he was wearing that one. And, um, I, you know, I'm, I, I am a su uh, superstitious here and, and probably won't change on that. All right, so back to other news on the Dallas Cowboys as well as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, we know Tom Brady has had shit to do. His wife has been on his ass a little bit about, you know, doing more things around the house. So apparently being famous and rich doesn't stop any of that from happening to any of us men, okay? And we all know if mama's not happy, ain't nobody in that house happy. Ain't nobody. No, let, let's be clear. Ain't nobody happy if mama's not happy. And getting mama happy is like, you know, I don't know, finding a unicorn? Yeah, I mean, we, we, all, we all love them, but you, you, you all know how it goes. You all know how it goes. Um, Chris Godwin, one of the outstanding wide receivers that Tom Brady has, who's on the Michael Gallup program right now, um, has had uh, the good old ACL tear. He's been practicing this week. He's practicing today with the orange jersey, which means stay away. Do not touch. No contact. Like he's a quarterback. And it doesn't sound like he's going to be ready to play this weekend. Um, Listening to Todd Bowles, Todd Bowles is basically saying it depends on what the doctors say, of course, and also to uh, having the field turf that they're playing the next two games. And understanding with the field turf, 
it's not very forgiving and it's basically you plant and you can get that jolt and all of a sudden be you know set back kind of like chase young was allegedly so I'm, I'm thinking that he is not going to play the cowboys um we are ready to roll apparently apparently the team at least uh, today doesn't feel nervous like they did um that game against the 49ers they said uh mike mccarthy talked about the team being more spirited and seeming like they are just kind of like chomping at the bit i actually want to play a little bit of the press conference of the dallas cowboys and mike mccarthy and let, let's go in and see if we can hear a little bit looks like i'm getting the why am i getting game week you ready david oh yeah game week All right, well let's go then let's go it's going mike david moore dallas morning news You've talked a lot in the offseason about your emphasis on improving the run game, kind of getting it back. Is this a, a good a test that you can have out of the gate going against this Tampa Bay defense? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you look at the way Tampa Bay you know, plays defensively, you know, first starting with the personnel, but then obviously the way they challenge us schematically. I mean, if you go back to our game last year, uh, they made a very, very strong commitment to the to the box as, you know, as far as you know, one, one more hat than, than – we had as far as you know, uh, you know, formation and so forth. So um, they did it throughout the whole season. Uh, how they're going to play Sunday night? That's you know, that's what we'll see. But at the end of the day, uh, you have to run the football. Uh, there's definitely points in the game you, that you have to be able to run it when everybody in the stadium knows you're going to run it. So and that's you know, that's our mindset. And, um, and I think we've had really good work um, throughout the training camp mm -hmm. in the padded practices. And I think the uh, joint practices really helped us. You know, if you, you guys are all at the Joint practices, you know, we, we focused heavily on running the ball more and throwing it in those practices by design. Clarence Hill for Western Telegram. In the past, Tony Pollard has been more of a change of pace to Zeke in his style. Is it more of a tandem than a change of pace this year? What's the philosophy going on? Oh, I think they both. I think they both hold their own. As you know, I mean, I, I look at both those guys as, as number one runners, or however you want to categorize it. So, yeah, I mean, you know, Tony can play. You know, I think when you look at running backs, you know, I know how I define them. You know, um, their ability to play on all three downs, and, and Zeke and Tony both have that, that ability. I mean, Zeke's done, Zeke's done his whole career, uh, so uh, I think they're definitely a tandem. You know, and, and it's obviously a focal point for us. Who's next? Mm, Thank you, by the way. It's a big hit today. That's oh. it's not stop again. Patrick Bogan, DallasCowboys.com. Uh, update on Kelvin Joseph and Jordan Lewis on the expected practice. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they both you know worked on Monday, so uh, they'll both be out there today. I thought Jay Lou looked good. You know, I, I think the uh, timeline and the work with Britt, um, we feel good about where he is, and uh, and Kelvin's in good shape too. Uh, John Michelle, the Athletic. I think you were in your late 30s. You were in New Orleans uh, okay. the first time that you faced Tom Brady. I think it was 2001, his first season. Um, <laughs> I think that's right. I remember the game. I think they won 34 17. Really? Yeah. You, guys, like, you, you know, think you looked it up on the internet? I could. I don't know. <laughs> um, do you remember anything going back that far? And just how wild is it that somebody is still playing? You know, the, the thing I remember about Tom Brady is, um, you know, Tom was working out with a gentleman by the name of Tom Shaw. You know, Tom, Tom always did a phenomenal job, still does, um, with the, you know, the uh, NFL draft prospects. And, and it was my first year in New Orleans. And I think just like a lot of, you know, first off seasons, I mean, there's just so much going on. I, I know it was, it was a crazy off season for me personally. It was the first time being a coordinator. Um, so to, going through the draft process, well, Tom Shaw um, would would bring the, his prospects over to over to the facility. I hope the statute of limitations are over on this because I, you know, it was a it was just a friendly exchange between the coaches and, and, and the prospects. So I had a chance to sit down with him and uh, just talk football, and you know, and then obviously he was drafted by New England. So that was like that's really the only only time I've ever sat in the same room with him. Um, but yeah, I, I don't shoot, I don't recall the game to be honest with you. <laughs> Todd Archer, he's been just falling up in that. What, what do you remember about your conversation with him then? Like, do you think he was a bright kid? Obviously, you're not thinking he's going to be coming oh, yeah. in the game. No. Uh, I remember watching the uh, – there was a bowl game. Um, oh, Alabama. I think it was um, in Michigan, Alabama. Uh, he played extremely well. I, I can't recall it. It was the Orange Bowl or whatever the game was. But he played extremely well. I didn't know much about him. 
um, and, and then sitting there watching a the game. And, you know, I know back in the day when I was evaluating quarterbacks and having a chance to, you know, visit with them, you know, their ability to put them up on the grease board and just have them just, you know, take me through the offense, you know, just, you know, because they, they, they're all different. You know, offenses are different, languages different, and so forth. So I just remember being extremely impressed uh, with his knowledge and understanding of, you know, the Michigan offense and, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, being very impressed, you know, watching watching them play that day, and just because that's really what we did. We just went through, you know, some board talk and and put the game on and talk through the game. So, um, but Leo, just like everybody, he I thought he should have been drafted in the first round. I mean, that's right. That's where I picked him. You know, <laughs> so uh, but yeah, I mean, it's I mean, what a great career, obviously. All right, we're going to end it right there because we actually have some. Uh, I was looking on Twitter here. You know, I multitask. Um, we actually have some interesting stuff. We see Micah Parsons is uh, trending right now. Micah Parsons basically has said, let me, let me change the camera angle so I can look over here and read at the same time. Uh, on the Cowboys defense, I think we have a chance to break some more records and set a standard for how defense should be played. Okay. Um, then um, he also said, If the Cowboys use Micah Parsons, okay, no, that's not, oh, sorry. Joke to, okay, here, Micah Parsons joked when asked about Tom Brady playing longer than he's been alive. Think about that for a second, folks. Tom Brady has been playing football since before Micah Parsons was born. Micah Parsons said, we got to get him out of the league. He's been dominating this league too long. Added about Tampa Bay, he wants to kill you. He wants to step on your throat like you're trash. Wow. Oh, excuse me, like you're a roach. Wow. Wow. He wants to kill you. He wants to step on your throat like you're a roach. All right. Sounds like the gauntlet has definitely been dropped. So we'll see where all this goes. I'm definitely going to do a little bit more into trying to find that interview. Wow. Micah Parsons. We got to get him out the league. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, you know how we roll. We are getting out of here. We are going to be getting set up to see uh, my son, Philly 500, later on tonight, as well as Rio and Cop Pizzle. I'll see you then. What an idiot!